Thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they are slung from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And action! Wow, that was crazy. We almost stole from those folks. Right? And holy shit, that guy was so big. I can't believe he picked you up. Well, I must say, don't call him that. He is our master, and I, I am the chosen one. Our master has given me the grace of his touch and this doughy, fruit-filled delicacy that will feed my family for generations. I'm pretty sure that was just a guy, and he just didn't kill us. No, he had my life in his hands, and he spared me, for he knew I was special. He saw the bravery I had to stand and fight while you two cowards ran. Hey, no fair! You told us to keep running. And you did. Like cowards. Now go. Slide on back to your gross home with your slimy family. And into your little froblin bed of mud. I am too courageous for this homely lifestyle. I shall find the master again. And see if this time he will keep me by his side. Once and for all. Tomorrow, Tuesday, July 20th, our very own Anna Brisbane is making her first ever public Dungeon Master debut in a free one-shot for you all to listen to and enjoy right here on the Cast Party channel. Yarrell's Super Happy Fun Murder Dungeon is a highly ridiculous and mildly obnoxious collection of traps, combat, and puzzles that you do not want to miss. With a slew of brand new hilarious characters thrown into a dungeon filled to the brim with nonsense, this episode of The After Party is a little sneak peek of what our Patreon has to offer. Tomorrow, Tuesday, July 20th, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep your eyes peeled and don't let Yarrell find you in his dungeon. Hello everyone and welcome to Cast Party. My name is Colin McManus and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my studious cast and crew, Ryan McManus. Hi, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo at heart musician who is thinking back to his brand new look and is beyond ready for emo to come back. Emo phases should have never died and he's ready to rock swoopy hair under a beanie again even if it's 90 degrees out. Bring it back! I mean, that's basically what he's doing. He just needs the beanie. Exactly. I see it. We also have Anna Brisbane. Blueberry Sky Elven Druid, who was homeschooled since seventh grade, since and that was mostly like, you know, set schools. So she never went to like a proper university. So this is kind of exciting. Ooh. Aww. She went to like college parties, but never college. Oh weird. Nigel Deacon. Hey, Xander Gucci Supreme, who had always wanted a pair of off-white Jordan 1 Chicago's, but those shoes cost $5,000 in the resale market in his size, which is weirdly small for his height. It's a men's size 9. So instead, he went for an inauthentic pair on a sketchy website, never got the shoes, tried again from another inauthentic seller, didn't get them, tried one more time, got his identity stolen, got contacted by the people that stole his identity because he had so much debt and was accosted by them for wasting their time. Then the original shoes showed up, so overall win, everything's fake in LA anyway. What the oh. hell? What? <laughs> I might need a picture of those shoes just to, to get the contact. I, I got you. Don't worry. Are they actually $5,000? Yeah. Jeez. Dude. People spend that much on shoes? Yeah, some people do, man. Oh, my God. They just look like every other basketball shoe I've ever seen. They look like Deku shoes. <laughs> You're right. Like, they are very simple. The thing about Off-White is their, their whole thing is that they look deconstructed. So you can see with the heel, like that's not like leather. That looks like more like the patch that would go underneath leather. And then on the other side of the shoe is actually just like the address of, I guess, Nike. I don't know. And also like the swoosh is like patched on rather than actually being sewn into the thing. Oh, yeah. Look, at I didn't notice that. The Chicago, those normally go for something like $12,000. And Off-White is a designer brand. So when they came together, it was a pretty big deal. Interesting. Oh, sorry. The Jordan 1 OG Chicago's from 1985 are $34,000. Damn. 
Vince Perino. Hi, Jet the Boulder Chambers. Fun facts about Jet. One day, he was out and about at work, just getting ready for a scene, and he found a little CD sitting on a table. He noticed that Sebastian had dropped it, so he decided, okay, I'm going to take it home, and you know, we'll, we'll test it out. And now he's somewhat a fan, but he will never actually admit to it or let Sebastian know. I knew it. What? Well, Sebastian can't know it, but I knew it. <laughs> wait, wait, was it a CD or was it a cassette tape? Oh, yeah. Tape? <laughs> Did you bring out the cassette tape player for that or was it an actual CD? Well, didn't you just start, start to drop the uh, cassettes in Fendraya? Yeah, the cassettes are new. Yeah. I haven't dropped a cassette. I'm going to have to drop a cassette this, this episode. Not in a while. <laughs> you haven't been doing it every time you kill someone or put someone down? Well, the last time I killed someone <laughs> accidentally, but not really, was like... 60 feet away with the fucking ballista. The cassette was kind of like your uh, your calling card. Yeah, my serial killer calling card. <laughs> 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 Let's get right into it. Talk about what happened last time. All of you, plus Kingsley and Zephyr, descended down the Great Lift from Elverath to the village of Tulta. Along the way, you discussed your plans for what to do next, as well as learned about a few magical disasters that Kingsley had learned about during his time as a prisoner. You learned of the Saprophytic Plague. A magic user created this plague to help ferry people from life to death at an advanced rate. You learned of Windermare, a knowledge center that was blown up and killed thousands of innocents, as well as decades of history, philosophy, and magical knowledge, all because the people there wanted to, in Kingsley's words, play God. His notes also spoke of the Druids of the Crimson Grove, and finally you learned of a near-cataclysmic event where a man by the name of Volazar attempted to combine the Material Plane with the Elemental Plane, which changed Fendrea and a few major landmarks were created from this disaster. After your reading of Kingsley's journal, you finally reached the bottom of the lift where Xander convinced the guards that they were investors and would no longer be investing in the prison due to the riots. You headed on your way, decided your next destination was Faramore, and parted ways with a much richer Zephyr. You traveled for some time before camping for the night. Xander had a run-in with some Froblins. Froglins? Froblins? Both. Yeah, we kind of switched between <laughs> the two. Had a run-in with some Froblins during his watch and shared a donut with one of them. Blueberry had a very different experience with a hooded little girl. Blueberry was able to deduce that they both tried to force each other to sleep through magical means, but both were ineffective. Following the trail in the morning led to a complete disappearance of the footsteps. So you instead, you continued on to Faramore. You passed the entrance to Matthias's University of Modern Magic because you had a different destination in mind. Cost choppers. You all changed your looks in various ways before heading back to the university, being greeted by a very large, shirtless, humanoid man who told you Matthias would be waiting for you in the foyer. That seemed to be all too accurate as you entered the foyer to a beautiful piano playing in a man who introduced himself as Matthias. Now you're standing in this foyer, books magically putting themselves away on a nearby bookshelf, looking at an older human man who has just finished his deep bow to you. And so the scene is set. The question is... Visitors or prospective students? Yes. Visitors? And maybe prospective students. We don't know what Kingsley wants to do. Are you visiting a current student here or just checking the place out? We're kind of looking for, like, a college tour. Like, you know, we're, we're kind of interested in the place. We're just checking our options, you know, go through, get a free t-shirt, that kind of stuff. Yeah, campus tour. Today's a great day for it. Classes are not in session today, so you, uh, the whole area is completely open. And he begins looking around. He points to a dragonborn man coming down one of these long hallways and says, Ah, oh, Maurice, how would you like to give a tour since there's no cooking to be done today? This large dragonborn man moves closer and says, Ah, oh, yeah, boss, I, I could do that. This is a red dragonborn man. He has a cane he holds in his right hand that he use, uses for walking, has deep gashes around the top where his nails on his hand scratch the cane. He is wearing a white chef's uniform as he approaches and does a small bow. Maurice Gormand, chef at your service. Maurice was created by Paul Seif over on Patreon. Thanks so much, Paul. Hey, That's thank good, you, Paul. Is. We'd like to take like kind of like a look around, maybe see some uh, curriculum lists. Maybe y'all got a website, brochure, <laughs> pamphlet, posters. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw. We had the the flyer out front. That's about it. No information on anything you teach here. Oh, I mean, I'm just the chef. No information on anything you cook here? Oh, I can show you the kitchen. 
I could eat. <laughs> can, do, you, do you teach a do you teach a culinary class here? Like, can we? Is that is that? Can we enroll under you, Maurice? Oh, I mean that that's like a extracurricular. The seniors get to do that, you know, after they gotten their all all their magic stuff done. I teach him how to sear, and he goes, and he has a little bit of fire come out of his mouth. You teach them how to breathe fire? Yo, can I learn that? Like everybody? Yeah. Wow. Can can I? Jed, I think this guy's lying. I think it might take you a long time, guy. You don't look so magically inclined. I just gotta say it. Ah, ah. Am I doing it? You know, you know what? Valiant effort. That is the type of determination we want here at Matthias's University of Modern Magic. Okay, good to know. By the way, could you like maybe uh, I want to grab Xander's mu- mutton? No, not mutton. Muffin? No, mutton. Uh, mitten. <laughs> <laughs> mitten. <laughs> <laughs> mutton muffin mitten oh my god that's a new magic item <laughs> a mutton muffin you know you might be onto something oh, it no. wouldn't be too bad that was my idea I'll get back to you with that one you'll be the first to try it copyright that jet I get 70% of profits we're a non-profit sorry bud I get 70% of compliments I'll share a compliment with you right now you got good ideas I think maybe it might be terrible thank you Speaking of ideas, do you know of any way to either cut this off, get rid of this, know anybody here that could possibly take care of this mitten? It's kind of stuck. Oh, gotcha. Well, we got uh, some lumber workers and stuff here. They might be able to just cut it off. They got saws and stuff. No, we're good. That's um... (laughs) not the hand of the fabric. So we kind of we tried cutting the fabric already, but we're told it's possibly cursed. Mm, Not necessarily out of the realm of possibility. Some people here might know how to do it. Could you point us in the right direction? Well, I'm supposed to give you a tour. I don't know if I can give you information about who's teaching what. I can give you a little idea what we we got going on here. Some of the cooler stuff that happens. Mostly the ceremonies that I put on and everybody gets all the great food. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Mm. On this tour, what if, uh, you know, you brought us near someone that could possibly, quote unquote, help us out? Maybe give us a little hint on the way? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Give me persuasion. Nat 20. Oh! You know, I can't do that. And he has a little wink as he says can't. Especially today. There's not many teachers here today because there's no classes. I can wink. He says wink as he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Get you a special meal. How's that sound? Okay. Hey, uh. What day of the week is it? Uh, Tuesday. That's a weird day to not have classes. (laughs) No classes on Tuesdays. No classes on Tuesdays. (laughs) Are Tuesdays like your weekends or? No, we got those two. Do people not eat on Tuesdays either? I, I don't really cook for the students most of the time, actually. I only cook for the big parties and stuff. They got to cook for themselves most of the other time. Oh, word, 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 word. You know, like graduation, parent-teacher conference day. <laughs> that's a thing that's not in universities, but it's here. <laughs> oh, God, we're going to have to come to Kingsley's parent-teacher conference. <laughs> <laughs> My parents had a similar cooking policy. Only for the parties. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to do it all the time. I'm a chef, and I don't want to cook all the time. Yeah. Well, yeah, anyway... Hey, um, so why don't we do this tour? I've never done one of these before, so follow me. He starts walking down one of these hallways. And so he starts heading down a hallway to the east. You can see to the north of this hallway is a beautiful courtyard. From where you're walking, you can only see little windows that pop out to it. But there are doorways, and they're completely open doorways. There aren't doors there. Seems like somehow all of the debris and dust and leaves and stuff are all magically kept within this courtyard. This is a courtyard, nothing too special. You know, there's herbs and stuff. Uh, Some of the uh, herbalists go out there, apothecary stuff. Uh, They do some classes out there when it's nice out. Good for sitting, good for reading. Lots of students do their their work out there. But uh, most people do it over here. And he brings you to a small little like study area. That has a big aquarium, bunch of different aquatic plants, animals, lots of fish. And there's a big staircase that goes upward around it. 
this is that main tower you saw outside. This is actually the main part of this tower is the aquarium. And it's like a small little area they can watch the fish. There's all these different books and chairs all over the place. So uh, I don't know where else to take you, but the kitchen, if you want to see it. It's my pride and joy. It's not too big, but it's 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 great. Question, is the top of the aquarium visible? Like, is it open or is it like going up into the tower? It is going up into the tower, but it is open on the second floor. Do the fish look happy? Give me perception. Dirty 20. They look like they have plenty to eat. They look like they're all healthy. They all look like they belong in this type of water. They look pretty happy. Good. Yeah, those are dinner sometime. They're they're pretty tasty. <gasps> no, don't no, nope, don't say oh, that. Nope. Oh no. <laughs> what? What do you what do you mean? But they look so happy. They're so fresh. We kill them right on the grill. Why would you do that? That's not good practice. What do you mean? Just let them live in there. Just wait until they die of natural causes. What about fire? That's natural. Not if you're the one creating it. I don't see it. But I'll tell Matthias to get more fish, I guess, so more of them die of natural causes at the right time. How's that sound? Okay. Namora scampers up the stairs and out of view, and then he can be seen in the water at the top of the fish tank. <laughs> oh, God. He's going for a fish. He's trying to get a fish. Okay, give me a dexterity check for Namora. Whoa. All right, he got a 14. He's able to catch a fish pretty easily. Excellent. I think to him, Namora, don't eat don't eat that. Not, not in front of Blueberry, all right? So instead, he dances with it. <laughs> How do you dance with a fish? <laughs> Kingsley pipes up. So, what are we doing here, guys? We are going to get information eventually, I hope. I don't think this guy is the right one to ask about magic and stuff. Yeah, but you got to start somewhere. We got to know places to go. Like, hey, Maurice, is there like the principal's office or like, sorry, the dean's office? <laughs> oh, you want to talk to Matthias again? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he'll want to talk to you again. Why? Does he just like greet people and then just poof away <laughs> no 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 it's, he's real stressed lately we're running out of students his main thing is like just trying to bring in as many students as he can running out not enough people are signing up okay you're not like losing people not in an exorbitant rate or anything like just like a normal rate what's a normal rate to you i don't know i think a student or two a year like that's not too bad Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. When you say losing people, you don't mean like they're getting abducted, right? Like the or like getting killed. They're just like not showing up anymore. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, if Matthias wants so many people to sign up, then he should be inviting and just like talk to us, because like we 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 said we're prospective students. Kingsley over here is trying to go back. He's a late learner. He's trying to hone his magic. Us too, maybe. I can do this and. No, actually, I won't do that inside. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, do you want me to bring you back to him? Yeah. Anyone else maybe that we can meet while we're here before we go back to him? Did you meet Kanu? No. Kanu? Is that the big fella? The one with the tattoos? Yeah, big guy. Yeah. Is he more of a, a magic -y boy or was he kind of, he, he kind of gave off a bodyguard type vibe to me. I mean, he does both. Oh, yeah, he's he's scary, dude. Real sweetheart when you get to know him. I do know one teacher who might be able to help you. Are they hot? I mean, are they <laughs> um, knowledgeable? Yeah, they're really knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that one. Let's go there. Like I said, they're probably not in today. Can you bring us to where they usually are? And he brings you down another one of these hallways and opens up a door to a large lecture hall. It's basically just a bunch of chairs facing two small desks at the front. He normally works in here most days. Who's he? You'll, you'll see him. Okay, does he allow, like, auditing of his classes, or...? Come back tomorrow and ask. That's probably fine. Okay. What time is it right now? Let's say it's, like, 12.30. So do we come back at the same time tomorrow? 
I don't know if he'd let you sit in on the class if you're not students, you know? What if we say we're just students and then we drop out literally after his class? <laughs> you could do that. To be honest, the test to get in is not that hard. There's no tuition? Oh, I mean, there's tuition. How much? I don't know. I'm the chef. See, this is why we got to talk to the dean. We got to ask these, these hard-hidden questions. You have, like, an admissions department? All right, let's go back to Matthias. Follow me. I'll, just, I'll bring you into his office. And he does just that. Brings you back to the front. He gives the door a knock. Matthias opens it up. Maurice, you're done. Did it go well? And he's got a big smile on his face. Yeah, boss. They wanted to talk to you about uh, joining the university. Have fun, guys. He starts hobbling down this hallway back towards where he, he pointed out the kitchens were. Oh, we didn't look at his kitchen. Oh, you didn't. Is Namora back with you, Xander? He's in the fountain in the courtyard. <laughs> He's just doing his thing. Ah, wondrous. Which of you has the talent, drive, and magical capacity to be one of our esteemed here at my marvelous university? Uh, we just got some questions first. I want to druid craft a flower crown onto his head. Ah, oh, not quite my style, but I like the drive. And Kingsley's, he nudges you, Jet. Is that me? Should I say yeah? Yeah, and I'm just going to push him forward. He steps forward and stands up very straight. Matthias looks at him and goes, Ah, oh, the least likely as always. I simply must have underestimated you. Your friends all look well-traveled and battle-ready, and you just seem to be a little more... reticent. Good word. Are those the two of you? Or anyone else? He looks at the others. Uh, are, 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 we, are we doing this, Sander? Are we, are we just... I mean, we, we should find out more. We should go all in. I got magic rocks and finger guns. You can shoot lightning from your boombox, so... I also don't want to be in massive student debt, so I guess we should get some more info first. But also, like, we can just dip without paying. Like, what are they going to do? Oh, you're right, you're right. Just dine and dash the college. <laughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. Blueberry wants to know if you have hot teachers. <laughs> um, Young lady. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Sexualizing teachers is not allowed at my university. Of course not. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> What is your name? Blue. Interesting name, but I will keep it in mind. He, like, scowls at you a little bit. And your name? And he's looking at Kingsley. You can call me Maynard. And he gives a little bow. Great. Let us begin. Follow me, please. Shuffles outside of his office, and he begins walking outside. And he holds the doors to the university open for you. And you all return to the sun as it shines outside. Matthias begins walking you to a nearby building. He says on the way, I am so glad you found your way here on such a beautiful day so we can take influence from the light and warmth the sun grants. The moons can only be powerful if the sun is there to provide balance. So true. So true. Ah, so here are the dorms. We can show you those in just a moment. First, we have to go back this way. And he passes by the entrance to this moderately sized building. It's just one story and continues towards the back. Behind this building is very open. This whole university area has a ton of spaces in between all of the buildings. For the most part, it is just land with around five main structures, four buildings and the watchtower. But the area behind this building is very flat. There is a small shed that is currently closed on the side of this dorm building. There is an archery range with a target that is charred from fire. There is a straight track that has markings on the ground that looks like an area for, like, foot races. And Matthias moves over to the archery range and says, Yes, which one of you would like to come up first? Kingsley looks at you all with wide eyes and hesitates. You got this, Kingsley. I'm going to push him forward. Oh, <laughs> yes, me. He walks up next to Matthias. Matthias puts his hand on his shoulder. Maynard, show me your prowess. Aim for the target. Um, ha! And he puts his hand out. Can I shoot an Eldritch Blast when he does that? 
from your position? Yeah, I'm like nearby. I want to try and make it seem like Kingsley sent it out. <laughs> okay. I will cast Prestidigitation on Kingsley's hand to match the color of Xander's Eldritch Blast. Okay. Xander, give me a deception check. I was going to make you do it with disadvantage, but because Sebastian's helping you, I'm going to let you roll it normal. Okay. Dirty 20. You can see Matthias, you know, just had his hand on Kingsley. He was more looking at the target. The target gets hit really quickly. Well done. Maybe our best students yet. That's what I'm talking about, Kingsley. Hell yeah, Kingsley. Yes. Matthias walks over to a fence post and has a set of rope curled around it. He takes a small knife out of his pocket and takes a chunk of rope, cuts it in half, hands it to Kingsley. Put this back together. <laughs> oh, I can't help with that. I can, but I don't remember why. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to put my hand on Xander's shoulder and uh, just cast a little guidance. A little flower blooms behind your ear. Oh, I like that. Oh, 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 okay. And I, I'm going to pull out the little button from the shirt. <gasps> oh, yeah. To Xander, it just feels lucky. So he's going to, I don't know, throw it into Kingsley's hands. Now, Kingsley's a good 20 feet from you because he has had to move over to, like, grab this rope. Okay. So I'm going to try and throw the button at Kingsley so that it lands in the rope with his hands. <laughs> So, like, it would land in his hands, he <laughs> touches the rope, and then it mends. Do I see him questioning the button? Well, we have to see if he gets it into his hand first. Xander questioning the button. Oh, sure. Okay, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna finger guns him, and cast Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just to get his attention. <laughs> okay, so I've got that, and I have Guidance. What does Guidance do? 1d4. <laughs> 1d4? Okay. All right, what do I roll for this? Give me just a dexterity roll with a d6 and a d4. Please, Uncle Jerry. Okay, there's a total of 15. That's enough. Yes. I am going to roll an intelligence check as this button falls into his hand to see if he knows what to do with it. Actually, I'm going to roll an arcana because it's higher for him. Kingsley just sits there with the button in his hand and the two pieces of rope. He's like staring Matthias in the face as Matthias has this big grin on his face. Any moment now. Just try it. Kingsley, I believe in you. Um, Just close your hands, bro. You got this. I guess this would work. If you're just telling him to close his hands, that's not weird for Matthias. Right. The act of closing his hand, the button mends the rope back together. Fuck yeah. Ah, nice. Ah, <laughs> ah. And he presents it to Matthias. Yes, well done. Let's just try one other thing. Creation, illusion, whatever you can do. Matthias creates the visage of a small dog running over to a bucket on the ground. And it looks like it is drinking from the bucket. Aw, hi. Um, Okay. I can do it. As he looks back at you guys, and he just holds his hand up, and he goes, hmm. And I cast Summon Beast. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> my God. Since when have you had that? I know. <laughs> what? You call forth a bestial spirit. It manifests in unoccupied space. Corporeal form uses the bestial spirit stat. Um, I'm choosing a land creature, and it's going to resemble an aardvark. <laughs> what is an aardvark? I don't know what an aardvark looks like. <laughs> Does that have verbal components? Oh, yeah. I need a deception check as you do this. Okay. 21. That's plenty enough. You're able to, like, cheer on Kingsley and just perfectly time it where he goes, huh, this aardvark appears beneath him. King's just like a little scared for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> huh, well done. Very, very well done. And I'm going to drop concentration so it, it disappears very quickly before he realizes it's real. <laughs> You've mastered the basics, and that is what matters. Are you sure you want to be part of this institution? 
be happy to teach you. Does Kingsley think he actually did it? <laughs> no, Kingsley knows. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we will talk about it together. How much is tuition? We will talk about that in my office, okay? Okay. Were you still interested, young one? Yeah, I'm interested. And he runs you through the same tests, which are pretty easy for you. I'll thorn whip the target. I'm going to use druid craft to create like a brown vine that ties the ropes back together. Ah, interesting. Guess it still counts. <laughs> I will make a little kitten with summon beast that's going to run around <laughs> the dog and then it vanishes. Wondrous. Now, rest of you are set? We're contemplating. Well, if you would like to come back and talk. That's totally fine. You can enjoy your friends as they get initiated into the university and see where they will be living. How's that sound? Living? Oh, they get a home. He points to the dorm rooms. Oh my god, dorms? Ah, oh, cute. Yes, cute. Are there great parties? Blue, you're already on my list. <laughs> she made the deeds list already? She's not even enrolled. <laughs> Innocent question. I don't think you're supposed to ask the dean about parties, Blueberry. <laughs> Study parties. Good save. <laughs> no fun parties. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you do your work. Of course. You can have your recreation time. Of course. Gives a stern look to you. Turns back to all of the rest of you with a smile. Shall we head to my office and we will speak of cost? And curriculum. And staff. He looks at you really quick, Sebastian. All of a sudden pulls out of his pocket a long wooden staff that's as tall as he is. Yes, staff. Huh. Wow. Uh <laughs> Got him. Magic joke. Boo. <laughs> Pulling a magic out of a hat. Wait, a magic. Pulling a rabbit out of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be the episode name? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know Mary Poppins? Is Mary Poppins real? Who? Mary Poppins. I've not heard of her. Okay, never mind. Just curious. Did she go here one point? I'm, I don't know all the students. I don't know. It's possible. There's a lot of things that I didn't think that were real that are real, so I was just wondering. What an interesting question. Let us speak. He's relatively quiet as he walks over to the main building. He brings you in the front door in the hallway you saw earlier. And comes to the, the door of his office and gestures you in with a smile. Take a seat. Inside his office, there is a desk with a small chair for him to sit at, as well as a small window overlooking the front of the building. And there is a round table in the corner of this room with extra chairs. On his desk, he has a small sculpture made out of small malian bones. It takes the shape of a snake with a vertebra running down the main coil and small rib-like extrusions running all the way down to the tail. It also has a humanoid-looking skull as its face. The bones look as if they were from many different mammals and rodents that have been used to create this kind of gross monstrosity. It wraps around a small mug that he slowly sips from as you all take your seats. Now just a few questions. I need to know your goals and aspirations with magic. And he looks specifically towards Kingsley and Blueberry. What are you looking to get out of this university? My biggest interest is in travel and magical travel. Interesting. What distances are we talking about? Small distances are relatively easy. The biggest distances that are possible as much as I can to see the world to see other worlds, to experience as much as possible. He takes a moment, steals himself. Some things we are not allowed to speak about in public. Oh. Some of what you just said would not go outside of this room. How far is too far? Some of those large distance spells, especially those that cross planes, are forbidden. You should know this. I think something like this, a university would be really helpful to me because I don't know these rules. And I've just kind of recently found 
these gifts and I'm not entirely sure I'm new here and I'm not sure what is allowed and what's not, but I don't want to break the rules. Well, you're a fast learner and we can teach you those rules. Those are in our freshman year curriculum. And he looks towards Xander. Curriculum. Good looks, boss. Yeah, no, I, I already graduated from another uh, school, so I... That's the only, I'm, you know, just helping out these, these homies to, to get in. You went to Kevin's? Kevin's. Kevin's? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. It's, it's an independent, uh, it's not really accredited. It's, it's from the, from an organization of non-accredited schools. So I got the education. I just don't got the degree. You better not have gone to Kevin's. He doesn't even care about his students. What do you mean? He just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little sassy. And then he looks towards Kingsley. What do you want to learn out of your magic? Kingsley looks at you all, eyes you really quickly. Um, yeah, I want to learn magic that can help me in my everyday life and that will help get me home. Yes, where's home? I'm going to cast message to Kingsley. Kegs like, shh, um, <laughs> don't tell them. Um, hi, this is Sebastian. Don't tell them. Shh. Home is complicated. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but if I could get there, yeah, that would be great. Mm-hmm. Oh, you just want a place that you can call home. Yeah. Um, I want to call home home, but home is complicated right now, and I can't go back just yet. So if I have the ability to make home home again, and he's stumbling through his words, taking deep breaths, I forgot my lines, Sebastian. Sorry. (laughs) Great, wonderful. We can work on all those things. I just have a single question left. I must say this is an important one. And he grabs a copper piece off of his desk. He takes it in his hand and he begins crushing it slowly. I unfortunately must know the truth with this one. As he opens his hand, the copper piece disappears into a cloud of purple sparkles that reflect in his eyes. Do you have any history with the magistrate? In what capacity do you mean? Do you work for them? Oh, no. No. Not in the slightest. He looks at you all, scans you quickly, and looks towards Jet. And Jet, you feel in your mind him probing your thoughts. I need a wisdom saving throw. Three. As he asks you this question of, have you worked with the magistrate before? What do you think Jet's main thing he would think about when he hears Magistrate? Kingsley getting taken by them. You have not been honest with me. We have never worked with the Magistrate. We haven't worked with them. We, we, We have a history with them, but we have not been friendly with them. He nods. He looks towards Kingsley. You were their prisoner. How did that make you feel? Kingsley responds, Uh, not great, of course. Don't like being held captive. How long were you their prisoner? What did they do to you? Kingsley looks at you guys. Ten days, maybe? And they... And he's like looking around. He's looking specifically at Sebastian. And they... Cast message? They... They told you... The dangers of magic and how it should never be used. They taught me the dangers of magic and how strong magic is not to be used as it can hurt people. And then... And then... How my badass friends came and rescued uh, me. Wait, they didn't teach me that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you feeding him answers? No. Give me a wisdom saving throw. As he switches the detect thoughts on you, Sebastian. At the same time, K 
Can I cast suggestion on him? Ah! You get to cast suggestion at the same time. Whoever save is higher, their thing will go through. Roll off. Yeah, you know what? Sure, let's go against a fucking high level wizard. Sure. What kind of save am I doing? Wisdom save. I got 12. <gasps> 17! The DC was 17. <laughs> let's go! <laughs> he had a plus six to wisdom <laughs> saves. Like, that's not nothing. Dang. So, yeah, you're able to get the suggestion off. Keep your focus on Kingsley. He is your student. So you're essentially trying to make him stop detecting your thoughts and worry about Kingsley. He immediately does so. He lashed out at you for a second and then immediately comes back towards Kingsley. That is all they did to you. And Kingsley goes, Yes. And then I'm going to roll Deception for Kingsley. Uh, one of you guys rolled a uh, d20 for Kingsley and let me know what you got. Oh, God. It was a 14. Does not seem you have been truthful with me. The Magistrate is an institution that comes here to check on us. We have strict guidelines we must follow so that the Magistrate does not get angry that we are teaching people magic. If you have not been honest with me, things could go bad. All right, all right. You want the honest truth? Kingsley was their prisoner, and he's our close friend. We needed him back. We just got him back. We infiltrated their base. We infiltrated their prison. We took him, and we just left. So, we're all on the run from the magistrate. You wanted the truth. He has this grin. Now you can all be quite useful. You will be allowed into the university. All five of you. You are only to speak to the other students in casual manners. You do not befriend them. You will find your friends soon enough. You are part of a special group of students here at the university. And Blue, we may be able to just teach you how to get to where you want. <gasps> Really? But you must not speak of it outside of this room or our training grounds. We don't want to speak of it. We just want to do it. I fear you are not strong enough yet. But teaching can be done. Experiences need to be had. I need you all to promise me that you will not speak of it outside of this room, except amongst yourselves. I reach I out for a pinky out. promise. Damn it, Ryan, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> reach out with me. <laughs> All right, me and Sebastian hold out our pinkies. <laughs> he giggles for a second from his desk, which is not far from you at all. He uses a mage hand to come and pinky promise you all from far away. <laughs> Hell yeah. Whoa, you got to teach me how to do that. Could I make an insight check? Make an insight check. Go ahead. Do peaky promises count if it's not with your real hand? <laughs> True. All right. I'm going to Google that and see what comes <laughs> up. That's a 14. You see the grin on his face. Like he is hype that you guys are here. He's been looking for students. But is he hype to turn us in or is he hype that we're anti-magistrate? I'm just waiting for Nigel to figure out if it... I'm sure it's you have to use your pinky. I but... mean, you have to use your pinky, but nothing came up about not using your own hand. Go figure. <laughs> and also, who is delegating the legal rules of pinky promises? Urban Dictionary. The council. The council. <laughs> he says, you will all learn to use your magic to assist you in everyday life. We do that a lot here. Small inconveniences are brought up so that you learn to get over them. And use magic. We've all kind of changed our look since we left the prison. Should we change our names? Would that help for your purpose of keeping us unless the magistrate comes poking? That may be smart. You can at least give me names to write down. We do generally know in advance when the magistrate is coming, though they have been coming more often recently. Vince, in your notes, Matthias is not hot. I think we decided that. I'm just putting him as, as hot teacher in my thingy. That's what <laughs> I view him as now. Okay. Jet has his own tastes. That's fair. <laughs> he continues asking Kingsley, So you said that is all they did to you in the prison. You promised me. 
Tell him everything, Kingsley. Tell the truth. Kingsley pulls up the sleeve of his robe and shows a spot where a needle went in. I was, uh, vaccinated against a disease that's been going around. Uh, Crimson Grove, Talona, uh, where's my book? And he starts rifling through it, and Matthias goes, Oh no. Maynard, I must ask, you've been lying to me, haven't you? All of you did. Out in that field. Oh yeah, totally. We might have had a helping hand in his passing. Wait, why do I always make things sound like I'm killing somebody? You really do. We might have had a hand in him acing the test. You must never lie to me again. I will not stand it. Yeah. We just wanted to make sure he got in. That's all. He supposedly has some magic deep down. We just got to find it. Oh, we all do. He looks out the window for a moment and he is stroking his very nicely trimmed goatee. You have not been able to do magic since you left the magistrate prison. They may have been able to do it then. It completely blocked your nerve cells from connecting with the magical essence flowing through you. Our intel was right. This is not good at all. What? Are you saying he can't do magic from a vaccination? I believe so. I is it permanent? Does he at least have 5G? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I have a follow-up to that, because I was listening to the last episode on the drive down with Jackson in the car, and he asked when the whole, like, discussion about the vaccination and the force fields, he was like, are you trying to say that vaccines give you force fields? Is that the stance you're taking? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he doesn't have 5G, but he's at least magnetic now, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're part of this university now. First lesson starts now as we figure out how to get you back to normal, Maynard. So Matthias uses some illusion magic to cover up the window with what looks like a whiteboard. And he begins basically illusioning on these diagrams and drawings. First lesson, getting you back to normal. The body has two major pathways that are evolved in magic use. The nerve ducts and the magic ducts. When you use magic, you can feel it throughout your entire body because magic flows through everyone and throughout the entire body. Everyone in Fandrea is magic if they can learn to communicate with the magic that flows through them. The body has a few major points where the nerve ducts and the magic ducts are connected. These are called oberous synapses. This is where those of you who can wield magic are able to grasp at the essence inside of you and use it the way you decide. Your brain releases endorphins into the nerve ducts and thus tells the magic inside of you how it is to be wielded. Those synapses are located throughout the body, but the largest clusters are in the hands, the face, the heart, and the legs. Somehow, the magistrate was able to perfect this serum to completely block the connection between the nerve ducts and the magic ducts, so Maynard here can no longer connect with the magic that flows inside him. Different people have different necessities for these synapses to be open and available for use. The magic that flows in every being does not belong to us, it belongs to the universe. The magic inside each of us is also different. For me, the magic inside me is stubborn. I need to know the exact way to wield it, or it will not obey me when I send those signals through my synapses. Meaning I must study day in and day out to bridge the communication barrier between me and the magic that is inside of me. For others, they must pray to a god, or these connections will not be made. It is unknown whether the magic in these people are connected to that specific deity, or if the magic only requires faith and hope to be relaxed enough to be released. There are also diseases that affect the body at these synapses. Some people have magic and control it normally, but it becomes uncontrollable if their nerve ducts are overactive or have synapses too close to each other that receive conflicting information. So, he starts rubbing his face again and the diagrams he's been showing go away. How do we go about fixing you, Maynard? And he takes a moment. 
Maynard, I'll need a blood sample. Is that okay? Um, yes? Yeah. And so he gets a, a needle with tubing out and drips a little bit of blood into a vial from Kingsley. Oh, I'm looking away. <laughs> <laughs> After just a moment, takes that out, plugs the vial up. His blood looks normal. There's nothing weird about it after the vaccination or anything like that. Shakes it a little bit and he goes, I need to be off for a moment to do some research. Kano will be here in just a moment to take you to your room. Just at that moment, there is a loud knock at the door. And Matthias says, I will send for you soon. Opening the door is this large humanoid man that you had seen previously. Hey, yo, boss, one last thing before I go. Got any idea how to get rid of this thing? I'm going to hold up the mitten. I think it's cursed. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> we can work on that. Cursed magic items don't come around too often, especially here. So we will just have to speak to Professor Halen about that. All right. Professor Halen is not part of our little group. Right. 10-4. But we can talk about that soon. Please feel free to get comfortable in the dorms. Hell yeah, we got a room. Dorms. Dorms. Do we get our own rooms? Yes. Fuck yeah. What? Wow. Are you canoe? <laughs> canoe. Canoe. And he holds out his hand. And he goes, canoe, cola, cola, guy. Wow, cola, cola, cola. I'm going to hit him up for a dab. God, why do you do this to me? <laughs> Yo, Connie knows how to dap. Come on. I need dap mechanics. I normally just roll and then I decide with what I get, but I need like mechanics. He got a 13. It's an no, attempt. He, I, I'm, I'm going to hold my hand out and he just shakes it like a normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. All right. Okay. All right. Follow. Nice to meet you, Kanu. Lead the way. I'm Sky. <laughs> oh, is that your name you're going with? Actually, Matthias takes your names down before. What do you guys all want to go by? I'm just going to do Sky Johnson. Wolfgang Von Shakespeare. <laughs> Did you say Wolfgang? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shell with one L. Makes sense. Scoodles. Scoodles? Connie takes you all to the nearby building that you were behind earlier. These are living quarters for student. Again, the building itself is pretty small. It's a singular story kind of goes up the few stairs here and brings you into a small entry room that is dusty and has a singular torn rug on the ground. There are a few doors here and he starts pointing and he just goes, kitchen, storage, my room. Oh. And then he points straight forward, goes, downstairs, follow. Right behind Following. you. Kanu continues downward into an essentially pitch black basement. It's dark down here. Especially for you guys that don't have any sort of dark vision. He takes a small rock out of his bag and it begins shedding light as he continues down the stairs. Downstairs, it's extremely dark and the only light is currently coming from Kanu's rock he's holding in his open palm. The staircase descends into two tight hallways that have doors on each side. A few of them have small lights flickering underneath them. One is a bright green that is being cast into the hallway. Kanu gestures down one of the hallways and says, Last rooms on right. Okay. So there's rooms for all of you. I'm taking the far one. Open in the door. As you do, the door's handle is sharp and cuts your hand. Take one damage. Ah, oh. what the? F why? The more you use magic, the better you will become with magic. Ugh. Use it in everyday life. I can't open a door, Kanu. Oh my god. It is also pitch black down here. Especially the humans who can't see. You are like fumbling around in the darkness. The room here though, Sebastian, is pretty small. It's 10 foot by 20 foot. It has a small bed, a small chest, and a single sconce on the wall that does not currently have a torch in it. Do I have a torch? I almost guarantee you do. I'm gonna take out my torch and cast Prestidigitation to instantly light it and put it in my little sconch, whatever you called it. Sconce. <laughs> sconce. <laughs> you hear Kanu from down the hall. You may take a moment. Matthias says he is ready for you when you are done. 
Mr. Maynard may remain here or elsewhere in the building. Matthias only wants to speak with the rest of you. I will meet you outside. And the light slowly begins to dim as he walks up the stairs. Okay, bye. Thank you so much. I want to start sticking my hammer out as like a uh, seeing eye stick <laughs> and just try to find the closest door to me. Yeah, you bang into a door. And I'm going to go in. Same thing. There's a sharp piece on the underside of this door handle and it scrapes against you. Uh, you're taking one slashing damage. I'm going to hear Jet just clanging around and I'm going to go help him light his torch for his room. Sebastian, you do that for the, the five runes, I'm assuming? Anyone who needs it. Kingsley is fumbling around on the ground currently. <laughs> Kingsley! On the ground? Oh, 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 uh, I got you. He's like Velma in the dark <laughs> without her glasses. Take my hand. How did he? Uh, uh, my glasses. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm running back and grabbing my torch and then I'll, I'll hold it with me. <laughs> How does he end up on the ground? Yeah, you help Kingsley into his room. How are you opening the door? I'm going to thorn whip open everyone's doors. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was going to do something way worse. I, I, I've got a way to open mine. I'm just going to think to Namora like, hey, bud, can you open this door and find a light? <laughs> so he'll take the damage for me and then go in and he's going to touch the sconce and cast light for me. That's funny that the sconce like doesn't have a torch in it. It just is a sconce with light coming <laughs> off of it. <laughs> Kingsley pops into his room and sits on the bed. It is pretty cold down here in this basement. Doesn't seem to be well insulated whatsoever. So, rather dark down here. Maybe I should wait in the kitchen upstairs until you all come back. Why do you think he doesn't want to see you? He just wants to see us. I do not know. That is peculiar. It could be with the whole like lack of magic thing. Like if his nerves are all blocked up. Yeah, we'll keep you updated, though. Okay. I am actually hungry, so I do think I'll check the kitchen out. Or do you want me to stay here? Whichever you're comfortable with, I guess. Yeah. He walks up the stairs and goes into the kitchen. From my room, I want to yell out the door to everybody. Guys, can you can you all come into my room real quick? Uh, we got to talk. Coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Me too, or, or no? No, 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 no. Get Get your food. Fill up. Okay. I'm going to plop over and sit on Jet's bed. I'm going to lean on the door all cool-like. <laughs> so Jet's going to sit down on the bed next to Sebastian, and you can kind of tell that he's starting to get a little sweaty and upset, like nervous. I'm going to cast Prestidigitation <laughs> to chill up to one cubic foot of oh non-living material. So the bed. I'll chill the bed <laughs> for one hour. <laughs> I'll say you can chill the blanket on the bed because it didn't say up to one foot. Cubic foot. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how tiny a cubic foot is? <laughs> I'm going to do it on the pillow and give it to him so he can hold it like a tummy pillow, but it's nice and cold. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to it uh, and do the tummy hug. What's wrong? <sighs> Am I the only one that realized how fucked we might be right now? We're in a deep, dark, dingy basement of a sketchy university that's not accredited by anything, so... Hey, no, th they're accredited. No, no. I actually feel like we're in a better spot than we've been in a long time. We got beds. Kingsley... Kingsley can't do magic. Yeah, but he said we're going to work on fixing that. That's the first thing we're going to work but on. what if we can't? He's not the only one who can do magic. He said he could teach us. But what if he's the only one that can do the spell to get us back home? I doubt that. He's the one that got us here. What if it only works with him? Well, that would be dumb. Yeah, there's no way. Like, what are the chances that one dude in all of existence can do the one spell that we need? I, I don't know. Didn't, didn't we try saying the spell before? He, he said we're not ready. It's probably going to take some time. Were we ready back at home? Yeah, I guess not. But he's the only one that, that, that was able to do it. We can't be gone that long, can we? If it takes us months, years to get to that point, what are we going to do? We can't predict that. Like, we can't be away that long, but we also, like, can't get back any sooner. Right now, we're on the fastest avenue that we know of. It's better than never. I know. I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we realize what could possibly happen. 
If Kingsley was ready before, that means it's somewhere deep down. We just have to either bridge the gap or fix his nerves and build it back up. He was able to do it once. He's got to be able to do it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but with this damn vaccine that he got, how do you fix that? I don't know, magnets? Masai said we're gonna. We're gonna do it. We're gonna figure out how. It's gonna take some time. Every healing process takes time. How long? I don't know. For now, we just gotta we gotta trust that Matthias knows what he's doing, you know? I understand. I'm just I'm worried. I know, man. We all are. This whole thing is is I don't know, it's kind of been fucked from the start, but we'll get through it. We got this. Can't heal a broken bone overnight. Yeah. All worrying does is make you suffer twice. I feel like that's all we've been doing this whole time. At least I have. Well, uh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, thanks, Sander. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know, don't stop worrying, obviously. Like, keep the ideas in your head. Have that goal of what we're trying to get to, but, like, try not to stress about it. Right now, we just got to keep moving forward. We got to do the things that we need to do right now get it done i want to make sure that we're all on the same page with this and that we all understand what could be a possibility in the future if all else fails we can continue doing some good while we're here we've been uh pretty useful one day at a time no magnet healing no magnets? I mean, you never know. The power of magnets, is it's incredible. Like, how do they work? Miracles? So you guys head outside of the dorms. Are you leaving your torches lit? Doors open, whatever. Mm-hmm. No torch in mine yet. Torch lit, door open. I don't want to get pricked again. You guys head back outside. You can hear Maynard clanging around in the kitchen, like looking for stuff to make for food, apparently. And outside is Kanu. Matthias will be waiting inside. Kanu kalakalakalokalele. Kola kola kai. Kolo kolo kalakalele. Kola kola ke. Kola kola ke. Yes. Well done. Ukalele. <laughs> and you all head back inside. Who else is in the foyer but Mr. Matthias himself? Welcome. My office, please. I guess it is time for your second lesson. <gasps> we haven't even finished the first lesson. This is lesson A, part 2B. Okay. It seems Maynard's oberous synapses are completely blocked by some substance that has invaded his nerve ducts. It stops the connections with magic between the synapses, meaning he has no way of influencing the magic that lives inside of him. We need to remove whatever substance has invaded his nerve ducts without permanently damaging his nerves, or he will never be able to walk, let alone control the magic inside of him again. Oh. Shock therapy might work, but it is a long shot, and I doubt it would remove all of this blocking substance from his nerves. We're going to need something more violent. Violent? Something that causes convulsions to be sent throughout his nerve ducts while at the same time exciting the magic inside of him. That should allow the synapses to flood with nerve activity as well as magical activity, and it may be our best shot at helping rid him of this substance. Now I brought you here without him because I must say it will be dangerous for your friend. We must be there for him to make sure he is safe, and we will take every precaution to make it as painless as possible for him. I have no idea if this will be helpful in any capacity at all. But I had a buddy that, uh, you know, he also had some nerve blockage from a substance and it was in him. They use like Narcan to help him out. But also, I have this stuff that called Grave Dust. I don't know if that'll help. Are you bringing illegal substances here? We are already trying to hide from the magistrate and you're bringing illegal substances what could bring the pheromore guard whoa, whoa whoa wait hold up this stuff's illegal i don't uh, this is yes i just bought it out of a dock <laughs> let me guess a shady character who gave you a silly nickname to make you feel like you were wanted yeah exactly and he talked you into how amazing it would be he was so sweet <laughs> does that not sound 
like an illegal drug dealer. It sounds like a good salesman. <laughs> an illegal good drug salesman. You got me. <laughs> well, We're not using that unregulated chemical. I also just don't think it would work. Uh, all right, all right. I'll save it for later. Not for me. You know, oh, God. Well, it sounds like it's for you. I will not have it at my university. Look, I'm not, I'm not using, it's not. Recreational time is your time. It's not for recreational. We'll, we'll use it for, like, something, future. It, forget about it. I put it, it's, it doesn't exist. Pretend I never said anything. How do we fix Maynard? Well, we're going to need something that can cause this reaction in Maynard's body. Shocking the nervous system the nerve ducts at the same time that we excite all of the magic inside of him a huge blast of energy comes right at these synapses and hopefully knocks away that substance and he pulls out from his desk a large tome that has pages and pages torn out of it large portions of it are stained in blood and other liquids the page the book opens to has a picture drawn of a large squid-like creature that floats in the air. Unlike a squid, the tentacles do not originate from one side. Three long tentacles extrude from its top and bottom half, like the letter W stacked on top of the letter M. Where the tentacles meet, the creature has a body that has two relatively flat sides that each contain a hole that penetrates deep into the fleshy mass of muscle. The front of this creature has a single, massive, glassy eye with no pupil. The creature itself is perfectly symmetrical when split down the center, save for the six eyes that dot the end of its large tentacles. They all look the same, but each has a different color, and much like the eye in the center, they are glassy, dull and have no pupil have you ever heard of a nathrix and for today that's a wrap ah, oh, na what nath the fuck? nathrix nathrix n-a-t-h-r-i-x thank you all so so much for listening want to go behind the scenes and learn more about matthias and his mysterious university Head on over to patreon.com slash cast party to become an official part of our cast and crew. You'll receive VIP access to behind the scenes and all sorts of crazy exclusive bonus content, an invite to our community discord where we host live listening parties with all of us on the release night of every cast party episode, and entry into our merch giveaway that we do at the end of every cast party episode. Speaking of, this episode's merch giveaway winner is... Nicole S. All that and so much more can be found at patreon.com slash cast party. Thank you all again for your support and for listening to cast party along the way. It's crazy that we're in the twenties right now. We're actually almost coming up on a year of cast party. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all of the wonderful support and the amazing community that we have grown so far. We'll see you all in two weeks to see what this wretched mythical creature known as the Nathrix has to do with us getting home. See ya! Manny, Maynard, Maniacal, m Mastermind. Marvelous moves Minnie Mock would have mastered. What? Oh my god. Just rattle it off. <laughs> yeah, is that the, the <laughs> alphabet rap thing? Yeah. How much of that do you have memorized? All of it. You have the whole thing memorized? Yeah. God damn. Okay, do it, do it right now. Artificial amateurs aren't all amazing. <laughs> Analytically, I assault animate things. Broken barriers bounded by the bomb beat. Buildings are broken physically and bombarding. Casually, great catastrophes, casualties. Canceling cast got the canopies collapsing. Detonated diamond dank daily doing dough. Demonstrations, Don Dada on the down low. Eating other editors with each and every energetic epileptic episode. Elevated, egg hit. furious, fat, fabulous, fantastic. Blurries off, punk belt, being the fanatic. Skip got great global goods gone. Glorious, getting godly in this game with the glorious. Hit him high, hella hype, historical. Hey, Holocaust, him, Sierra Mahler, as your homeboy. Imitators idolize, I intimidate in an instant. I'll run. 
rise in an irate state, juice to my jams like Jericho's, Chuck and Joyce, just it's just me, write my journals. Kind lamb, kind of laying all kinds of in God. Karate kick type roots in my kingdom. Let me live a long life, lyrically lessons this learn like losses to lose my livery. My mind makes marvelous smooth masses. Marvel and move me, mock what I mastered. Nerds nap knowing I'm nice naturally. Knack never lack, make noise nationally. Operation, opposition, off, not optional. Out of sight, out of mind, wide beaming obstacles. Perfect to poem. Powerful bunch lines, pummeling, petty powder puffs in my prom. Quite, quite, copsky, quiet, it's gone. Coral isn't gotta go to what we got. Really, right, raps rising up, rapidly riding the rest of radio activity. Super scientific sounds are thoughts on soon super fire stops at herself tells 10 times sound too tough take that child just get a tune up universal unique and touch and it already the rotten cut for advice lord victoria's valid violate vibes that are in make a mess while my wood would wise or smith just weaving up words we did up on my workshop xerox max ration will sex rise excite letters and apple and toads still back yes well still well yes 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 zigzag zombies zoom into the scene and zero and that's over his own rhyme zealot hell yeah jesus that has to go in the episode somewhere blooper like oh, yeah. <laughs> part of the episode we've ever had because people yep. are gonna be like what the mutton muffin how the hell didn't i think of that he must just be a culinary expert i gotta watch my back he could try to steal this gig from me and i can't have that happening this is just like the final showdown in culinary school jesky fire coming in and searing meat on a stove top instead of her flame breath I thought no matter what that I'd be able to win over Eric Five and Ebab Flo with the flame charades and flair. But no, she just pulled out her famous recipe and didn't burn her steak. Ugh, Saint E. Love at least gave me points for style, but like, come on. This guy, though, he's got that courageous feeling coming off of him, and he's big, too. Reminds me of a little Rosendo from way back in culinary boot camp. Mutton Muffin. He's an ideas man. He reminds me of Sean de Jesus. That little genius came up with cornbread, like corn and bread, just putting two foods together. Mutton, muffin, corn, bread. I gotta do that, like, like cucumber bacon. Cucumber bacon, the new hot thing. I can do this.